Hey guys, what's going on? It's me again. It's the Original Gamer Stevie Stro, and we are back for another chapter in programming. And basic on the color computer, we're going to jump into chapter 16, which is called the Silver Screen. But before we do that, I thought I would just take a moment here to reflect on this interesting journey. Um, and as it turns out, when I and so number one, all of these videos are on my YouTube channel in a playlist. It's called Programming in Basic, right? So there's a, there's like right now there's 20 videos in here, and there's going to be more, right? So I've tried to organize these things, and I've labeled them by the name of the chapter, the topic of the chapter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they're all here um, on my um, YouTube page. If you go over here to my home page and uh, of course now it's taking two hours to load and you scroll down here to where it says color computer stuff I got a lot of color computer stuff here all organized by different playlists and then if you click on programming and basic boom here you go right so here's the playlist of, of all the chapters I've recorded so far so this has been an interesting journey and let's look at the first video I recorded this was done November 16th of 2015 so right now it's it's April 10th in 2017 so this means I did this in November of 2015, which means that all of 2016 has gone by, which is a year. And four months of this thing has gone by, which is 16, 17 months ago is when I did my first video, uh, which is kind of bad now because uh, it means I've really wasted a lot of time. <laughs> I really fell off the wagon with this, but we're back on the wagon. But when I did this, <clears throat> I, I'm not even sure why I did this originally. I'm trying to remember. I think the reason why, well, I kind of know some of the reasons, right? Because I wanted to program again, right? And so I figured, you know, and I could probably read this book in a weekend and I could start programming and I could just do that. But I thought it would be interesting that if somebody who's never programmed before, they might think this is a cool thing to learn because when I was a kid, this was cool for me to learn. And and my thought at the time was, because I do have a lot of kids who watch my videos, like my Minecraft videos and things like that, I figured there's a lot of young people today who probably have never even considered using a computer. So maybe some of them might look at one of these videos and say, well, that's kind of interesting. Let me see what I can do. And so I set this whole thing up in a way that literally anybody should be able to do this at home. So I based it on an emulator called VCC, the Virtual Color Computer 3, that is very easy to install and download, assuming you're running Windows. It's plug and play, there's not a lot of crazy configuration. I based it on a, a PDF copy of the manual that I found on the Color Computer Archive so anybody could get this book and read the book along and, and do this themselves. Matter of fact, if somebody started this 17 months ago, hopefully they weren't waiting for me <laughs> and they finished it by now. But my idea was, if I'm going to do this, um, let me do it in a way where I can document the process and share the process and that way maybe somebody else might enjoy this. And, and I honestly had no idea who would want to watch this like this video is this was my introduction video but look at this a thousand people watch this video that kind of blows my mind chapter one got 558 views you know that kind of blows my mind um, some of the early comments I got back then were from uh, Roger Wilco and Jim Gary Jim Gary a completely prolific programmer on the MC 10 and the Coco uh, T turbo 128 left a comment six months ago, Max Jackson, right? So 558 views on chapter one is pretty good. Um, chapter two got 324 views, and that one it, it, it took a, a month or two for me to get back to it, but I did get back to it. Um, Curtis Boyle has been commenting a lot. Uh, Scott Haley commented on here. Dennis Wojcieszynian, uh, Max Jackson, again, James Ross, who's been um, commenting on stuff on my channels for a long time. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, th uh, 324 views. So these are pretty good. Chapter three had 133, 133, 134 views on chapter four, 108 views on um, on uh, my first custom game I wrote. Kind of wrote a game, kind of went off book. Curtis Boyle has been along for the ride. So you know, it's been an, it's been a really interesting journey as I um, do this and. And again, I thought, you know, it might be cool for a kid 
that might want to do this. I wasn't sure who would watch this. And, and the new ones I've posted now that have only been up for like a week, they've all gotten like 50 views on average, um, which is pretty interesting. And the people who are watching it are people who, a lot of them are grown-ups, and I didn't think anybody, uh, you know, over the age of like, you know, 12 or 14 or something might even find this interesting. It's really hard to, it's impossible for me to know what people like or what people are going to like. So I'm kind of... Um, blown away by that i'm kind of like overwhelmed by that so i just thought that was kind of cool i just wanted to share that because i thought you know this has been an interesting journey um learning how to program in basic was you know really got me interested in technology got me interested in computers um expanded my mind into being creative and making games and making graphics and animation and music i had a lot of fun on my color computer so i do want to share a lot of those memories and i want to share that journey of kind of rediscovery that I'm going through right now. And um, so we're moving on now to chapter 16. And the other part too was I figured <clears throat> because I have a gaming channel and people watch me play games, then it might be interesting if we make our own game together. And so I figured at the end of this, when I learned all the tools and I learned all the commands and basically relearned them, that then I would put all these ideas together and come up with the idea for a game. So if somebody was kind of following me with this and watching these videos every week or whenever I was planning on releasing them, hopefully by the end of this, we'd all have these ideas. Well, based on this command, maybe we can do this and make a game that does that, you know. And so those were some of my original ideas. A lot of time has passed. Um, a lot of other things have kind of occupied my time and interest. But uh, I'm back here. I'm inspired. Um, to get back into programming because I, I see what a lot of people are doing in the color computer right now and I want to work my way up to, to being able to do that kind of stuff too. Hey what's going on everybody it's me it's Original Gamer Stevie Stro, and I just want to let you know that I have merchandise available at my website right down here called OGSteviestro.com. What kind of merchandise do I have? Well you can get yourself a DVD kind of like this. This here is my David Dave from 2016. This is the Coco Fest 25th anniversary color computer gaming DVD. What else can you get on that website where well, you get yourself a DVD like this? This here is my brand new DVD for 2017. This is my Coco Fest 26th anniversary DVD featuring uh, 13 gameplay videos and over three hours of, uh, or at least maybe two hours of, um, you know, gameplay goodness. Well, for a limited time anyways, too, you can get yourself the 2017 version of Popstar Pilot on my website by going to OGSteveStro.com. And uh, this is the, the new edition that will be available for sale this year at Coco Fest in April of 2017. You can get yourself one of these here, right here, too, from my website, OGSteveStro.com. And you can also get yourself a really cool retro swag shirt like this that says Original Gamer. You can get the Insert Coin logo. You can get the I'm a Coco Nut. You can get some Atari 2600. You can get all kinds of retro images on a t-shirt or a coffee mug it's all good stuff and it's great merchandise and i'd really appreciate it if you go to my website right here ogstevestro.com click on the link for merchandise check out what we got get yourself some today all right people so we're now on chapter 16 which is called the silver screen let's get the page a little bit bigger here so chapter 16 is called the silver screen are you ready to find out about another statement? If so, turn down the lights and butter the popcorn because we're about to raise the curtain on the silver screen. Now, a word about video memory. Whenever you want to display an image on your TV, the computer stores the screen image in video memory. The computer's TV circuitry then reads the screen image and displays it on your TV. So normal video memory is large enough for text, meaning letters and numbers, but not for graphics, circles, lines, boxes, and so on. So consequently, your computer has two video memories. It has one for text and one for graphics. So there's a text screen and there's a graphics screen. So we are now gonna learn about um, this little program here that they're calling Light the Silver Screen. Take a look at our lines program for a second and concentrate on the screen statement in line 20. So line 5 said P mode 1 comma 1. Line 10 said PCLS. Line 20 said screen 1 comma 1. And it says here that the screen command tells your computer to display the screen, uh, to display a screen image on your TV. 
what kind of screen it displays depends on the instructions you give it. So um, first tell your computer whether to use the TV screen um, for text or for graphics. Um, second, tell your computer what color set to use. So the screen one, if it did a screen zero, it would be text. If I did a screen one, it would be graphics. And there's a comma, then there's another number. And then that's either a zero or a one, depending on which two color modes or which two color palette options you choose from here. <clears throat> screen type comma color set is the syntax for this command. So type is zero for text, one for graphics. Um, your color set is zero or one. Note if any if note if type or color set is a positive number greater than one, your computer uses one. So if you said screen two comma two, they would translate that to one comma one. So in the lines program, change line twenty to this. Now I think I have to load that program back in. I think that one was just called X, right? So I'm gonna load in my X program, which I saved to a floppy. Um, here's my program. So now it's saying in line 20, change um, the thing to say screen 0, comma 0. So I'm going to say 20, screen 0, comma 0. And I'm going to run it. And guess what we don't see? We don't see the graphics. Why? Because the graphics are being drawn on graphics memory, which is on screen 1. And we've told the computer to display screen memory, which is screen 0. And this was also another trick we often did or I often did, I'm sure other kids did too. But a lot of times you would just put a little text on the screen, a little bit of information, and then in the background you would be drawing in your pictures and painting them in and designing your screen, and then you could run the screen command to turn it on and present it to people when it's done. That way you didn't have to watch all the dirty work of everything being constructed. And so it was often a thing that I would do to um, kind of disguise the process and not let people see what my program was doing to generate the graphics until it was finished and then you saw the screen I wanted you to see. So I just, uh, in line 20 here, I said change my screen to zero. Now let me just show you one other thing here. And if I say 20 screen 0 comma 1 and I run it, I now have this kind of peach color. This was an interesting way to change the text mode in our text screen. Our text screen technically had two modes too. There was a green background with black text. Or technically it wasn't really black text. It was light, light green background, dark green text. Um, and then if I did screen zero comma one, it was kind of a peach or pink or whatever color here with a well, not quite black, but kind of like a dark red foreground color. And you could change this screen color mode in um, text mode as well. However, the minute I hit break, it automatically went back to the green mode. So that screen mode was something you could turn on, but you had to keep it on in your program. On um, the minute you went back into your normal command prompt type thing here in basic, the screen would turn back to the default colors. Now, I do seem to recall Back in the day, um, there were these commands, which we haven't gotten to yet, that are called poke. And there was ways to poke things into the memory to change this and turn this on and have it stay on. So I remember doing those. I don't remember what that, what that poke command is right now. But what they were showing us here was basically showing us how if I change the screen mode to zero, I'm actually telling my computer to display a text screen. Now it's telling me to go back to line 20, and this time it's saying screen 1 comma 0. If you recall, originally this said screen 1 comma 1, and the 1 was the high mode, which had the white or buff with the purple magenta, all that kind of crap, right? So when I run this now, that same program, um, instead of it being a white background uh, with orange stuff, it is now a green background with red stuff because I chose color set zero. And here in the book it says, if you do color set zero, your colors are green as your background, and then you have yellow, blue, and red. Red is the highest color, so your high order color would be red. If you do color set one, you have buff or white as your background, and then you have cyan, magenta, which is kind of purple, and orange. Those are your different color modes. Now, because I'm running this on VCC, what you see here is you see a little white border around here, and that's something that VCC did that a real color computer did not do. Typically in a color computer, 
um, and these two graphics modes here, the border around the screen was the same color as the um, background color. So on this green on this green screen mode here, my border was green. But on the white background screen, my border was white. So VCC, for some reason, shows us a white border that the real color computer did not for for whatever's that worth for whatever that is worth. Now there's a little sidebar note here. What does this sidebar note here say? Anytime you run Anytime your program outputs text, meaning the print or input command, the computer automatically performs a screen zero comma zero. So if I had graphics up right now, and then I used a print statement to print something to the screen, or if I did an input statement and said input, what is your name? Those things that would force characters on the screen would automatically force um, the screen mode as well. And that's something that basic was doing. So the basic language said, if you're trying to put something on the screen, the only way a person is going to see it is if that screen is visible. So I'm going to automatically flip to that screen. Um, now it says um, it performs a screen zero comma zero command in a two color mode described in the next chapter. This gives you black and green screen. Okay. So we just talked about the two color sets here with the screen command. Now it says, do it yourself. Do you understand screen? If you do, write a program that switches from text screen to graphic screen. You might want to put a loop in the program so that it changes the color set after it loops through the program. Um, that way you can see all of the screen features at work. So what are they asking us to do here? They're asking us to switch the screen modes. So um, let's do this. I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do a line one and say CLS. Line two, I'm gonna say print quote. This is text. Um, now, when I run that, it's already gone. Hi, this is John Linville and Neil Blanchard. We are the Coco Crew. I hope you're enjoying watching Stevie Stroh play video games, especially the Coco games. When you're done with that. Check out our podcast at So when I ran that program, my text is already gone. Now, when I hit break, you can see that it's back on the screen now because text stays on screen zero. If you print the text first and then you switch to a graphic screen, it will not erase the text because there are two different um, pages and two different areas of memory. There's text memory and there's graphics memory. So what the do-it-yourself program is asking us to do is to change the modes and so right now line 40 is looping to itself let's let's use a go sub for a delay so i'm going to say line 500 for delay equals one to five hundred one to five hundred next d for delay colon return so now on line 40 i'm going to say screen um Actually, let's get rid of line 20 completely. On line 20, we're going to get, well, we kind of have to. No, actually, I kind of don't. Okay. I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of line 20. Let's list this out here. Again, just typed in 20, hit enter, got rid of it. Okay. So now in line 40, we're going to go through our different screen modes. So I'm going to say, 40 is going to say, um, screen um, 0, comma 0, colon, go sub 500. Line 50 is going to say screen 0 comma 1 go sub 500. Okay, line 60 is going to say screen 1 comma 0 which is graphics go sub 500. Line 70 is going to say screen 1 comma 1 colon go sub 500. Line 80 is going to go back to 40. Let's list it out see if I got this right here. So we start off by printing something on the screen. We're going to say this is text. Um, then we set the P mode. We set the page mode, which I think we're going to talk about shortly, to uh, P mode 1, which is a, um, a low resolution screen. Then we do a PCLS, which clears the screen. Then we draw our two lines, which draws our X. Now, once we've drawn the lines, um, I haven't set the screen mode yet. So even though I turned on P mode, and I told it to draw the lines. I hadn't used the screen command to switch to that screen. So line 40 starts off on screen zero, which is text. 
on color mode zero, which is green background. It go subs line 500, which pauses to the count of 500. Line 50 stays in text mode and then goes into the high color, um, which is the orange background, peach, whatever you want to call it. Line 60 goes to our screen one, which is now switches over to graphics, comma zero, which is the low colors, which is your green, yellow, and blue. Go sub 500, pause, line 70, then says I'm going to go from screen 1, comma 1 to the high end of the colors, which is your white, cyan, magenta, orange. Um, go subs 50, which is a pause to the count of 500. Line um, uh, 80 goes back to 40, and it's going to keep cycling through these modes. So let's try that right now. This is text. This is text. That's the green background. That's the white background. This is text. This is text. That's the green background. That's the white background. Hi, I'm Mike Rowan. You're watching Stevie Stro, the original gamer. And this is text. This is text. Green background, white background. So that was the little do-it-yourself program that they asked us to make. So I'm going to save this as uh, color cycles. All psych. All right, that's what I'm going to save that one as. So, do it yourself program. I just did your do it yourself program. Now it's saying clearing the screen with the command that's called PCLS. Your lines in your program should like this should look like this. P mode 1, PCLS screen 1, line line 40. Look at line 10. It contains the PCLS command. This statement simply clears the graphic screen. It serves the same function for the graphic screen as CLS does for the text screen. And now it says PCLS space color clears the current graphic screen um, into a particular color. And then you, know, you have from 0 through 8. If you omit the color, the computer clears the screen in whatever your current background color is. And remember, we set the background color by using the color command. It was color uh, foreground comma background. Um, and we use the numbers in there. So now it says in line 10, in our PCLS option, um, if we typed in PCLS 6, we would get a different color. So in line 10, instead of just PCLS, if I typed in PCLS 6 and I run it, we're going to see a slightly different color. Now, okay, yeah, that's the color yellow on one mode, and it's the, um, I guess that's, I don't even know what color that is. Is that the... I guess that's the cyan, yeah, because it's not magenta or orange. So that's like their cyan. And um, because it's on a color computer emulator here, the color is not perfect, but you kind of get the idea, right? So PCLS6 use the cyan color. Hello, I am Paco Otecte, aka Drencor, and you are watching the original gamer, Stevie Stroh. All right, so five would be white, six would be cyan, seven would be magenta, eight would be orange. They, they've all got those numbers. Um, so that's showing us that you can use the PCLS command to change the screen to one of the available colors. And so at this point, um, it says, here's the syntax for PCLS, PCLS color, 10 PCLS six. Ah, chapter 16 wasn't that bad. We learned two new commands. We learned the screen command. We learned the PCLS command. What are the takeaways from that? Um, it, the takeaway is that um, you have two screen modes. You have screen zero, you have screen one. Screen zero is text, screen one is graphics. Each of those modes have two color palette options. So, um, so you have screen zero, color zero. Color zero would be green background, color one would be orange background. With graphics, it's screen one. Color zero is green background. Color one is white background. So um, the screen mode switch you between graphics and text, and then the palette mode switches you either between the low uh, order colors, which is always on a green background, or the high order colors, which is on the white background. So not bad, not bad. And so we did a little bit of an example and we made it through the chapter and nobody got hurt. So I hope you enjoyed it and we got more to do. Uh, make sure you um, give the video a like if you liked it. Throw out some comments. Let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you think about this series. And uh, let me know if you are actually 
programming along at home and what you're doing right now and maybe send me a picture or send me a link or something like that if you've got some dem some demonstrations or some examples you can show me all right guys i'm out of here for now but we'll be back in chapter 17 keep on programming everybody bye bye <laughs>